hello, hello. We are here today at the Amazon Advertising Podcast Studios speaking with Jay Richmond. Hello. How are you? Very good. <laughs> now, you. before we get into the fun and exciting things from this morning, I need to know, were you able to pick your walkout music this morning? I wasn't. Uh, I did request uh, Wu-Tang, cash rules every, around me, but... <laughs> For some reason, they didn't go with that. So. Thunderstruck was a strong yeah. option. Yeah. I feel like that was one of the most notable things. I pulled out my phone and I was like, oh, we're talking about that later because I think it really set the stage for all of your incredible announcements. All right. I think you're giving the <laughs> music selection a little bit too much credit. But, uh, I appreciate hey, it. It got me excited. I needed that adrenaline rush this morning. Good, good. <laughs> well, other than the music, which was fantastic, what was your most exciting thing about your speaking this morning? Oh, boy. Well... I got to tell you, I got like a real rush uh, when I saw all the phones come out, like snapping <laughs> photos of some of the visuals that were on display. And then uh, the QR code, which we flashed that granted access to the tool, which we made available today uh, for select advertisers to register their interest for. So I don't know, seeing that like energy <laughs> and like vibe and response from the, the team and then seeing the the curves yes. uh, on the reports like uh, most spike, right? definitely. That was, that was by far the highlight. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, in my opinion, the AI Creative Studio, which was what the QR code was giving access to, was the best announcements. I think the direction you all are going with enabling advertisers to be a little bit more efficient with their workflows is incredible. What it was a lot of the challenges that you were seeing in this space that you feel like Creative AI Studio was solving? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for that because <laughs> AI Creative Studio was like a big build. Um, so we started off like a year ago trying to solve this creative barrier problem. Um, as you know, and your audience knows really well, creative is one of the largest barriers to rich media advertising. And that's true for brands large you know, and small. You know, for smaller ones, that means that they usually just stick with like search or sponsored ads and fail to reach their customers using images and video and other kind of like rich media assets. And the larger brands they invest a ton in their creative and then they just watch it grow stale over time. And so we launched Image Generator a year ago uh, to help like solve that problem, democratize access, allow for creative refresh. We then follow that up with uh, live images as like subtle motion to them, starts to bring them to life. Video Generator, so those two were announced last month. And then uh, today we announced Audio Generator, kind of like the latest to the lineup, kind of <laughs> I think of it as like completing the suite. And then it all comes together in AI Creative Studio, kind of like an all-in-one tool where you can start to you know, build ads um, traversing the various media types. And I think that's like a really exciting development. So I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate you, you recognize it as well. A hundred percent. I think one of the key parts to that you mentioned is the all-in-one tool. I think historically something that I personally struggled with is everything's relatively segmented, especially people who come from the PPC side of the world. You have sponsored brands, custom image. You have sponsored brands, video, top of search. You have vertical video now, Amazon Post, sponsored display, custom images, streaming TV, all with an ad console. And the builders behind that were typically relatively segmented. You went to create a campaign, then you uploaded the appropriate creative. You are giving people a place to do all of that in one. And it's not just advertisers that are able to access it, which I think is incredible. It's a huge unlock for brands. Yeah, well, so what you described is both an enormous opportunity, right, to be able to reach uh, shoppers um, across all of these surfaces, whether it be, you know, Prime Video, Twitch, Alexa devices, even Whole Foods Market. But it's also like a huge challenge to actually build and maintain ads for all of those placements. And so the thinking was, how do we like turn this like challenge like into an opportunity for larger brands who are starting off with awareness campaigns and helping them kind of connect the dots towards uh, lower funnel actions with sponsored ads, taking a TV ad, for example, and turning it into a sponsored ad. Um, and then for smaller brands kind of born and growing up on Amazon, how do we help them up the funnel from starting with sponsored to helping uh, differentiate them through image and, and video? And so to be able to tackle that challenge, you need to start with the creative. You need to start with the objective because if you start with like what is the product uh, and what is the publisher and what is the placement, you've already narrowed your surface area. And so we think that it's like really interesting to both uh, super serve advertisers who know what they're looking for and have mastered our tool set, while also 
allowing uh, customers who are like relatively new to this suite to be able to experience it through this creative first lens. A hundred percent. I mean, 275 million average consumers that we have the opportunity to target monthly. Incredible. And across every stage of the funnel. And like you mentioned, I think on the smaller brand side, you have the ability to enter a simple prompt or even not enter a prompt. It's actually pulling in the ASIN and the listing and creating an image that relates to everything that it's indexed for, which is incredible. You can get that running within like less than 10 seconds, I think was my personal record. I oh, attempted it with, awesome. which was incredible. But then also, as you mentioned on the larger brand side, you know, they typically have a professional grade quality creative, and maybe they don't have the opportunity to quickly turn that around for all of the different formats that we've mentioned. And that's unlocked within Creative Studio. I mean, I saw multiple different ways to resize, you know, different formats and to make small tweaks and adjustments. And that's insane. Yeah. Well, I know I'm talking to a real power user. You, got, <laughs> you somehow got the model to work in 10 seconds. That's phenomenal. <laughs> oh, it took me, it took me some time. Right. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> but it's getting there and the rate of improvement is like phenomenal. Yes. And I think that it's probably like easier to picture the small brand with, you know, low, no time, resource, budget, skill required to get their ad like onto the big screen. Um, but the point that you made around larger brands who invest a ton in their creative, they too have challenges, right? How do they amortize that cost over lots of like native placements? How do they keep it fresh by applying topical themes? And so we originally built these tools, you know, wow, almost a, a year ago, um, with smaller brands in mind, only to find that the larger customers were very quick to adopt, even with all, all yeah. of the bells, whistles, and controls that we assume would be required. You know, simple things like take an ad and apply, take, take an existing image and apply a fall theme to it. Yes. Or apply a winter theme to it. Like that actually works phenomenally well. Or like take an ad that's been designed for you know, an IB standard and turn you know, a square into a rectangle or double the resolution so that it can appear like on a high fidelity screen in a Whole Foods market. These are the types of problems that even larger brands are starting to get the benefits of. And it's just like, you know, we were talking before we went on air about like the roadmap and how quickly you can move through. It's just with each one of these developments, like two or three new ideas, you know, come up. A hundred percent. Excited to nerd out with you about those. It's a dangerous space to be, honestly. I, I spent a lot of time diving into all the small tweaks. And I think what I really valued is there's a lot of different ways to view AI. You know, we're seeing all of the the different softwares that are being spun out really fast. But I felt like you were very intentional with differentiating this product. I mean, really small details. You mentioned adding a fall element to a traditional graphic or a traditional video. I was able to play around and, you know, one of the images it gave me had a little bit too many pumpkins on the side. And I was able to remove one of these selective pumpkins that I was like, this is too much. I don't love it. And those tweaks and the ability to actually edit your prompt live is such a huge adjustment because anytime I try to use any other, any other softwares just for my own personal fun with AI, I'll go to readjust my prompt and I'll get a whole different image. I'm like, okay, that does nothing for me, but you have built something that can be a solid foundation that brands can tweak and easily streamline into their workflows. Yeah. Yeah, our, our models do love pumpkins. <laughs> they, re they really do. I don't know why. It's like some of the hard problems they get like, yes. well, right, but like pumpkins. A hundred percent. One of the ones that I was testing, it kept pulling in grass uh -huh. and I was cracking up because like I did seven prompts in a row and it was just grass moved into a different location. I knew what it was pulling in from the listing, which is what I thought was most incredible because I think that's the efficiency play in my opinion is that it's directly connected to your Amazon business. So you're not having to start fresh. You don't have to download from Amazon, upload somewhere else, which was incredible. But I was like, I don't know what is in the listing that is driving this many grass elements in my photo. But like I said, it was really easy to remove when all you have to do is select yeah. the image and push the remove feature. <laughs> yeah. So the simplicity of the experience is, I think, a big point of differentiation because we don't expect our customers to be prompt engineers. A lot of our advertisers are not professional marketers, right? They want to get in and out um, and onto their day job, and we're here to help them grow their business. And so simplicity was key. Um, and so you'd mentioned a little bit about how the tool works. Maybe I'll uh, expand upon it, because what the model is doing is that it's interpreting the product details uh, and customer reviews in order to generate a prompt which then feeds into an image or a video model and then outputs multiple creatives uh, for an advertiser to choose from. And then once they've got the concepts, 
we allow for uh, simple editing of it. So if the size of the product is too large or small or it's on the wrong you know, part of uh, the, the asset, you can drag and drop, you move it around um, and preserve the rest as opposed to doing a full regeneration. As in your pumpkin example, you can <laughs> yeah. remove the pumpkin and the model is trying to anticipate what was behind that pumpkin and then fill in the gap with that information. Incredible and spoken a lot more eloquently than what I threw out there. <laughs> what are some of the small tweaks or the, what does the future of this look like? Where do you think you have a lot of opportunity? Like audio, I think is huge, but how do you brands make that actionable? It's not something that just you log into ad console and you can easily run an audio ad. So can you speak a little bit more on the direction you're wanting to go with audio and that rollout? Yeah. So, I mean, audi audio, it's a fascinating space. Um, there's just been this like huge gap between time spent listening and ad spend um, that has been bridged in the case of video, but has yet to happen in the case of digital audio. And one of the big reasons is uh, lack of ready to serve you know, creative. And we think by applying the same approach that we took to images and, and video, we could start to create a lot more balance. And because there's so much engagement with audio that there's just so much room, I think, to uh, fill the, um, uh, the opportunity up with. I also think there's a tremendous potential to bundle you know, multiple formats. I, you know, one of the things I see kind of when I look into the you know, crystal ball and play with these models is that the, the lines really start to blur uh, between <laughs> media type boundaries. Like, why do I need to start with building an audio ad or building it? Like, I'm trying to achieve something as a marketer, and right? I want to acquire a new customer. I want to resurrect an, uh, an existing one, a lapsed one, so on and so forth. These are like the objectives that I have. And I should be open to any media type, any publisher, any placement in order to achieve that goal. And when you can specify a product and like output images and videos and now audio, like you could start to see how those boundaries like start to blur. And then those like marketplaces, oh, I'm like in the audio market. It's like, no, you're in the customer success yes. market. And you just happen to be using audio uh, as a tool to it to achieve it. So I. I just you know, get really excited when I think <laughs> about what new markets like open up yeah. um, when these things all start to start to blur. It's incredible. I mean, I, a lot of Jeff Cohen and I's conversations historically on the podcast have been around the fact that the path to purchase is no longer linear. And a lot of people don't actually realize what that means until you put yourself into the shoes of the customer. And like I personally, I'm pulling up my phone and I'm scrolling and then I'm listening to a podcast and then I'm hopping onto Amazon. And like you said, everything starts merging together and being able to have the creative element unlock that you're allowing brands to access is amazing. And I'm not as familiar with the audio side, but before something like this was available, what type of work did it take to get a really good high quality audio ad out? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> well, I guess because the digital audio market isn't as large as display and video, it means that most of the ads were repurposed from terrestrial radio. Uh -huh. And so the, in, the, the format itself really hasn't evolved since uh, its inception, yeah. you know, in, um, I don't even know how far back terrestrial <laughs> radio goes, but you can imagine like 15, you know, 30 second spot um, with like some, you know, 800 number being called out as like a call to action. Like there really has been very little innovation of the format itself. And so it's just kind of been ported over. And so I think what's really exciting is not now that we can generate like purposefully for Alexa enabled devices, not only can the creative be you know, fresh and purposeful, um, but could also be made interactive. So for example, you could uh, say add to cart and actually transact with an audio ad, which was like unthinkable you know, just a short while ago, because audio is this thing that you listen to. Yes. It's just like one way broadcast medium. It's not thought of as this two way interactive one. Yeah. And that's part of like the magic of what we're introducing, not just how do I create an audio spot tailored for my unique audience, reflective of my unique brand and a thin air, but how do I do so in a way that strikes a conversation um, with my customer? And so we're just really excited to launch it today and see how it gets embraced. It's incredible because everything you all have done on the AI, AI side from the original custom image creation and things like that have allowed us to take a kind of national media mass marketing approach, 
but in a really granular fashion, right? We can segment our creatives to a very precise audience. DSP allows us to target that precise audience with a precise creative. And I personally never really consider the implications on the audio side because of that reasoning of all the commercials I hear on my personal day to day are the same commercials I've heard for the last 20 years. And you know, you see an interactive TV slot when you're watching the boys and it's easy to understand like, Hey, that's an ad. I'm now scanning my QR code and going direct to Amazon. And now you're saying that that is easily accessible, easily accessible on the Amazon audio side as well with something as simple as add to cart, yep. which is dangerous also. <laughs> For me personally, I'm the person to be like, yes, go ahead and add to cart just because I didn't have to pull out my phone. Like I'm, I'm a sucker for the efficiency play there. <laughs> All right. Well, good. We need more customers like you. Yes. That, that if you're listening, we'll have to add something like this in there. A little add to cart feature at the end of our podcast. <laughs> what other things do you all have rolling out that you're just incredibly excited about? Anything that we've missed here? Oh, well, what I would say is that like the, the pace of innovation is probably what I'm most excited about. I'm really proud of everything that we've you know, launched and you can see kind of the, the pace with which we're launching new things <laughs> has picked up you know, image generator a year ago, just last month, you know, live images at subtle motion video, kind of short form video, uh, audio, which we announced today, and then AI creative studio, which pulls it all together. Um, we're going to continue <laughs> to tell this story and kind of march forward as the creatives become higher and higher fidelity. Uh, you can imagine, for example, short form video becoming longer form video over time. I see no reason why we would stop anywhere short of like super bowl quality ads. Like it's not going to happen tomorrow, but you could see kind of the, the pace and the trajectory that we're on. Um, and so that's clearly like a direction. And then I think going in the opposite, uh, where he's like, you've invested a ton in your creative and you're trying to figure out how do I get it to scale? Like I designed this for, you know, IB standard placements. Like how do I, I'm missing out on all of these like premium publishers with like unique, you know, custom ones. So I think that whole transformation case, we're just starting to scratch the surface of, and I'm like really excited <laughs> about uh, continue to pursue. You all definitely keep me in business. I feel like I don't get a lot of sleep because of all of the rollouts. Like it, Unboxed is my Super Bowl, in my opinion. I wake up, I have my phone out ready to take notes because the roadmap is five to ten years out, in my opinion. Like you all are planning on creating that next wave of retail media. And I think whenever a brand attends a conference like this, they just, they get a taste of it and they can really start understanding the vision. And that really helps translate from that bottom of the funnel PPC that everyone's aware of to seeing how many investments you all are making and allowing brands to expand and connect with users anywhere. Yeah. I mean, what's interesting about innovating in this space is that you have to equally work backwards from the customer and their needs and forwards from the technology and what it's capable of or soon to be. Um, seeing the future in this space, uh, at least you know, the next you know, 12, 18 months, like, isn't the hard part. It's actually like predicting when the capabilities are gonna be good enough for you to have a commercially viable experience. Um, and that's kind of like the song and dance that we find ourselves in. I can't imagine. I can't imagine what it's like internally keeping up with both. I mean, Amazon moves so incredibly quick how do you find adoption is, do you have any feedback for brands that are trying to balance, you know, how to incorporate some of these assets internally, but also figure out what's best for them? Cause it can be a little overwhelming at times when there's so much available. How do you recommend brands approach that topic? Yeah. Well, I think so Im image generator is our generally available offering. Mm -hmm. Everything else that we've been talking about is in beta and some way, shape or form all in the hands of advertisers. Um, but it's still being perfected as an experience. Image generator is broadly out there and early adopters of it um, are already seeing tremendous success. They're building way more campaigns as a result. We shared that adopters of image generator uh, are submitting 36% more campaigns than those uh, who have yet to try the tool and are realizing a nearly 5% increase in product sales as a result. And that's because as the cost to produce these ads goes down, uh, the usage of them goes way, way up. And uh, they're finding pockets like of performance that they didn't even know were out there and then optimizing their spend accordingly. So I think that's like a great place to get started. 
because you need nothing more than like your product shot and then we can generate a whole host of creatives to choose from. A hundred percent. And I would say on our end, we've ran very similar tests and not only did we see a sales increase, but a lot of the times we did see a ROAS increase because when we ran them internally, the AI allowed us to get really granular with our targeting. So hypothetically, let's say I was advertising soccer products. I have a soccer ball, I have shin guards. Normally, I would have that one lifestyle shot with all my products. I would run it in a really broad sponsor brand headline search ad. Well, now I can take that image and I can segment it with really small AI tweaks for seasonality. I can add a Christmas tree in the back and, you know, start segmenting and targeting an audience for Christmas. Or I know soccer season's coming up and I'm targeting soccer balls for girls and I can add slight tweaks to my creative. So you're able to build out these segmented campaigns with a creative that's perfectly aligned with your targeting. Because I know a lot of people hear these things like, oh, more campaign, more sales. Like, what does that actually mean from an incremental perspective and a return perspective? And I know Amazon's got to be careful in that regard. But like all of the tests we have ran was directly correlated with that ROAS increase because we were able to be so much more granular. Yeah. And if you just take it from like the shopper perspective, this is a much better experience for them, right? Like if I'm in the market, if say we're both in the market for a new sofa, um, but you're into shabby chic, my style is modern. Like we could see that same product staged in very different settings, helping each of us better visualize that product um, in our own environment. And that's just like scratching the surface, but I share that as just like a good colorful example. And then creative, as you know, and your listeners know as well as anyone, um, decays over time, you know, with exposure. And so to be able to very quickly, easily refresh it for seasons or micro seasons, these are things that the tools are very well equipped to, to handle today. They do them incredibly well. The abundance of pumpkins uh, aside. <laughs> I think the other thing to note with that is not only are you giving a huge unlock on the creative side, but you also give a lot of opportunity just to test and learn with a low risk commitment. I mean, streaming TV being rolled out, no minimums, no commitments directly with an ad con- ad consoles, incredible. That was something that typically took, you know, 15 to $35,000 budget to be appropriately ran on the managed side. So you're allowing the creative to be created, but then they can test and learn. So it may not be the right fit then, but it's such a low risk commitment to go figure it out. Same thing with sponsored display. You can have an incredible creative created and then go target that specific audience within sponsored display without an an insanely high commitment. Yeah, and we think that it's gonna open up opportunities for brands that didn't even realize that they could reach customers with audio, with video, um, with display. I always think about I like the small brand that's like trying to figure out how to get into like the supermarket aisle as like a signal like that they've made it. And then to be able to bring that brand to life, like through like a screen in a Whole Foods market. Uh, I don't know. I get like goosebumps when I think about like those (laughs) those stories and the tools. Well, and one of the things I could say is that creative isn't going to be in the way, you know, for much longer for those more of those stories to to pop up. It's incredible the access you have. I mean, imagine sitting on your couch at home and watching the summer I turned pretty, watching Caitlin Clark, and then you have a small pause and you're able to see your brand on the TV. That is directly accessible through something like Ad Console, which is incredible. Anyone and everyone can log in and get it up and ready. You don't need to be a genius. You have made it so easy to combine those two elements. And I don't even think brands know what's available to them honestly because it's an overwhelming space there's a lot but once you kind of start connecting those dots and taking them through that experience like one of the things that jeff and i joke about is the mom test of like have your mom pull out her iphone type something into amazon and show them that sponsored brand out at the top of the page like once they see that and realize it's one of the greatest billboards on one of the busiest highways similar to the supermarket brands start to really get it yeah no i i agree i mean i i think amazon for the longest has been a great kind of pro tool, Mm -hmm. but you need to be like an expert (laughs) at Amazon to like figure out how do I leverage like all of these tools in order to deliver full funnel outcomes. Um, And what we're doing is we're systematically simplifying. We're basically observing how our power users are using our various tools and then bringing those experiences to the masses. And you heard a lot of that this week, not just with creative, and we spent a lot of time talking about <laughs> it, but in measurement, how do you actually like connect all the dots? Um, and with our DSP, which got a huge refresh. And so we're really leaning in to trying to connect all those dots and get after the holy grail right, <laughs> of advertising, which is full funnel marketing. 
You're a large brand. You buy on TV. You don't know the efficacy beyond who you reached. Can you connect all those dots you know, down the funnel? You're a small brand. You're competing on price. How do you help like differentiate them? Um, and so I think that those are just like really exciting opportunities. And just think about what like the best um, like Amazon experts are able to get out of all of our amazing tools and capabilities and how we're working really hard and really quickly to make it easier um, so that everybody can partake. 100%. I, my first job in college was managing Amazon ads. And in the last, I think, what, seven or eight years, I think however long it's been, there's been so many updates and changes. It used to be HSAs, PDAs, and the AMG team. Vendor Central, Seller Central used to have different advertising consoles. Now all of that's been incorporated. You all have taken feedback so quickly. I mean, I think two of the biggest things we've seen in the last 12 months is, you know, if you don't know SQL, you can't really utilize AMC. AMC is now, you know, providing a lot more no-code solutions. And then we have small tweaks, like you don't need to use DSP anymore to have access to AMC. But that is incredible. Yeah. Well, even just like listening to you speak, it's like a whole <laughs> language here, right? Like you've become, Every acronym. You are, you, you are the expert. This is right? my life. You are the expert. I have no life. We're productizing you. This is what we're working to <laughs> I love it, but it's because you all have made it so easy. I, I can't imagine starting... Amazon advertising again, because this is my whole love language at this point. But now you can log into Ad Console. And like I said, you can run a TV campaign within less than 10 clicks, I think it is. It's Ad Console, sponsor brands, sponsor brands video, add a video. It's so easy. And I think that's incredibly powerful. Like you guys deserve all the kudos for making it easier, where a lot of others made it a lot more complex. Oh, well, appreciate that. I'll take that back to the team. <laughs> Well, at this point, I think we're pretty close to rounding up. Uh, you've heard us nerd out and be absolutely excited about everything. Is there anything else you just want to shout out to the audience? Oh, well, I mean, thanks for having me on. It was a fun chat. Uh, it's not every day I get to sit next to an expert <laughs> and learn a little bit about my own tools. So I appreciate that. Um, but look, like the best is yet to come. We're like very early on this journey, but hopefully you can see kind of the story starting to unfold. And we want to help brands large and small like connect the dots, you know, for small ones kind of growing up at differentiating through brand marketing and for brand marketers to be able to connect the dots to performance. Like this is the problem that we're so excited to be like running after. And uh, hopefully you got a glimpse of that uh, on stage today. A hundred percent. It was a little bit of a celebrity mode when I saw you walk out and knew I'd have the opportunity to have this interview. So thank you so much. And I cannot wait to see what your team comes up with. <laughs>